Okay, okay, okay. So I just, I wasn't quite ready to be done yet. Uh, now this show, it's going to be a little laid back. It's going to be sort of a, a story time kind of thing. Because this show, there's no research. It's just going to be you and the Dork King. That's that's it. It's just, it's just going to be us. The top broadcasting live to at least three people on Spreaker.com. Never talk to strangers unless they're hot. The ice cream man is evil. Justin Bieber was sent to this planet to destroy the minds of teenage girls. When my hand falls asleep, I like to slap myself in the face with it because it feels like a stranger is attacking me. And I happen to love ponies as well. So, do you want to date? Mr. Pop. Dorks of the world unite. No, okay, listen closely. It's not Woba, it's Waba. This is the Chris Top Program, broadcasting worldwide to at least three people. And I am the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from my lavish studio apartment here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. You know, I know this is uh, sort of a surprise show. It's kind of a surprise to me as well. Uh, it is because I, I I wasn't planning on doing another show, but I just I feel like I get so rushed, and I don't have time to just hang out with you guys. So I thought, well, it might be a good night to tell a story. So it's it's going to be one of those late nights with the top. Uh, it's almost three a.m., but I, and I feel like I'm just getting started. Maybe it was that Pina Colada Calypso I had. I'm not sure. Now, remember the other day when I was telling you about how I used to read those books when I was a little kid? It was um, it was like a Batman book or Spider-Man. Or, and you would read it, and you would get to a certain page. And then, then you would decide, okay, do I go to page 76 or do I go to page 54? And I would usually pick the wrong page, and then Batman was dead. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to leave the fate of this show in your hands. Now, do you want me to tell? I've got two stories in my mind right now. One of which I have never, ever shared with anyone. This story is insane. That's choice A. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I really can't. And then I have choice B. Well, I, I believe I've told choice B on the air before. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, choice A may not be appropriate, but I can I can make it up. I can make it as PG thirteen as possible. And then you've got choice B, which probably isn't that appropriate either, but I, but I can, I can work with it. It's not as bad as, cho as choice A. So what do you guys want? Do you want to turn to page 56 and go with choice A? Or do you want to go to page 72 and go to choice B? So while you guys are thinking about this, <laughs> I'm in so much trouble. I am in so much trouble. I can feel it already. It's an old story. It, it really is. And I, I promised myself I would never, ever, ever, ever tell anybody this story. And I haven't. I haven't. And for some reason, for some unknown reason, I'm willing to share it uh, with the world. And I don't know. I don't know if the world's ready for it. I, I really don't know. I, I don't have a clue. <laughs> The Chris Top Program, the alternative to the garbage on Spreaker. Thank you for calling the Redneck Crisis Hotline. Our menus have changed. We no longer offer bologna and biscuit sandwiches on Tuesday. If you are calling because you live in a trailer park and just witnessed a UFO, just spit. If your family tree goes straight up and has no branches, just yell free bird because that makes everything better. Free bird! If your favorite color is John Deere, then kiss your sister but in a non-sexual way. Thank you for calling the Redneck Crisis Hotline. Holly Stalin's words cut 
like a double-edged sword. On the Edge with Holly Stalin, the fastest 30 minutes on Spreaker.com. Mr. Pop. Dorks of the world unite. No, okay, listen closely. It's not Woba, it's Waba. And I am the one and only Chris Top from the Chris Top program, taking that milk money back one nickel at a time. Okay, 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 okay. So th- this is where I'm at right now. I've got two votes for A and one vote for B. Uh, hey, Johnny, how are you? It's good It's good to see you. Uh, it is. And uh, we've got Holly in the chat as well, Judge Holly, and then we have the lovely, vivacious Kiss Kiss in the chat. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is, Kim, is Kim coming back? She may want to hear this or she may not. I don't know. <sighs> okay, so I'm, I'm just going to close my eyes and I'm going to tell the story. The best I can remember it. Uh, I was I was young at the time. I was probably nineteen or so. I can't believe. See, this is difficult for me because I I'm not used to sh- sharing these these types of things with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not. This is a crazy story. Well, it's crazy for me. Anyway, uh, it is. Um, okay, so so I'm nineteen years old. Or was I 20? I don't remember. I, I had my own place. And I had a roommate at the time. His, his, uh, his name was Brett. He, he actually stayed with me part of the time. And then the other part of the time, he was in California. And that's where he's from. So, so he happened to be gone. So I had the place to myself for, I guess it was a couple of months. Uh, I, had the, I had the place to myself. So I'm out one night. I, I'm I'm out and I, I I meet this girl, and and we we hit it off I get I fairly well I guess I I don't know, uh, we start talking. So, I ask her I said well hey do you want to come back to my place because I I saw just I, it was it was going to be a one night stand. See that's what I was needing at this time in my life I was needing just a, a good one night stand. So anyway. We end up going, coming back to my, my apartment. Can't believe I'm telling this. Oh, God, I cannot believe I'm telling this story. So many people are going to rip this story apart. Okay, so, so we end up coming back to my place. And I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. I am, I know, and I apologize. I usually draw my stories out a little bit more than this, but this is the first time I've ever told this one. So I think once I get it out of my system, it's going to be okay. So, so we come back to my place and we're sitting on the couch and we're talking just about stuff. And you, you know, I'm a dork and I'm, I'm pretty naive when it comes to certain things. So she looks at me and she says, why smoke? And I said, oh, you do? I, I said, well, that's cool. I don't mind. And she goes, no, she, no, I mean, I smoke. I said, well, what do you smoke? What are you talking about? She said, I smoke marijuana. I think back then it was uh, what she. I don't know if she called it a doobie or what she. I don't remember. So, so she says you, and I said, well, um, sure. Uh, so, and I didn't. I really didn't. So, so she she lights it up, and then she passes it over to me. So, so I take a hit, and I'm. I didn't really feel anything. You know, I didn't. I didn't feel a thing. So I, I passed it back to her. I can't believe I'm telling this. So I passed it back to her. And then and then she, you know, she takes a, a hit. And and so we so this goes on for a while. We pass it back and forth. And and I still I'm not feeling anything. And she says, and this this is when she warns me finally. And this is about 10 minutes into the whole thing. She she finally warns me and she says, All right, look. Be careful because this is really going to creep up on you. And I'm like, oh, great. Now you're telling me this. So I take another hit. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the world just closes in on me. Yeah, It's like I'm looking through this, this tunnel. And it's like this really long tunnel. And then I, I turn my head 
And then the tunnel, the tunnel turns with me. It's like I can reach down the tunnel and almost reach the end of it, but not quite. It, it was the weirdest sensation I've ever felt in my whole life. And, and I was sitting there on the couch, or I was in it. I don't remember. I was in a chair, maybe. And it, it felt like the chair was floating. I don't know what was in that stuff. I have no idea. No idea what was in that stuff. But I'm sitting there, and I, I don't know if I'm going to. It's like if I stood up, I would stand up, and then the room would catch up to me after I stood up. Strangest feeling I've ever felt in my life. So, so I'm talking to her, and I said, and, and, and normally I'm not this forward, but I, I felt like I had to lie down. I absolutely had to lie down. So I, I looked at her and I said, hey, do you want to go back to the bedroom? And she said, sure. So, so I stand up and then the, the room catches up to me. So, so then I somehow I make my way back to the bedroom. And I lay down in the bed. It's like I lay down in the bed twice. I lay down and then my body caught up with me. The weirdest thing I'd ever felt in my life. The weirdest thing ever. So I lay down in the bed. And, and, and the whole night was just full of these little, these strange little snapshots. Oh. And this, this, is, this is embarrassing for me. because I was scared, man. I was so scared. Because, because this woman, she could have done anything she wanted to. She could have robbed me, and I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have had a clue what she was doing. Because I was stoned out of my mind. And see, she was, she was smoking the same stuff, but I guess she was used to it. I wasn't. Not at all. So I'm laying there in the bed. And I remember her saying, and it sounded like, so what can I do to keep you awake? Awake, awake, awake. And it, it sounded just like that. It sounded just like that. And, and I remember just, just passing out. Just blacking out. Okay, okay, okay. And this is where it starts to get a little graphic and a little creepy, okay? And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be as gentle as I can. Next thing I see, next thing I see, she's remember, I'm 20 years old. I'm I'm still I'm really young and I don't know what's going on. So she's standing over by the end of the bed. She's standing by the end of the bed and she's reaching into her purse. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, oh my God, what is she getting out of her purse? Because in my mind, I kept picturing like this chick going psychotic and, and cutting my penis off, like cutting my penis off and robbing me. That's what I kept picturing in my mind. I was scared out of my mind. I was. So, so she's standing, see. All right. At, at, at 20 years old, I didn't have a problem down there. Okay. I'm 42 now. I might have a problem on occasion now. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, I didn't have a problem then. But when you're lying there and you're stoned out of your mind and you're thinking about some chick that you barely know uh, who's, who, who, who could be ready to cut your penis off, you're going to have a hard time. Well, you're not going to have a heart. You know what I mean. So anyway, I asked her, I said, so what are you getting out of your purse? And she says, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I can't help but worry about it. I'm thinking, what in the hell is she getting out of her purse? So then I black out again. I'm thinking I'm going to wake up in the morning. My penis is going to be gone. I'm going to be tied to the bed and everything I have is going to be gone. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. I'm probably going to delete this show when I'm finished, just so you know. So if you want to keep it, you, you better download it pretty quick. So I wake up again. 
and she's doing her thing. She's she's doing her thing, and I think she's trying really hard to do, you know, to get me to, but I'm still thinking the whole time that she's she's going to kill me. So so she's down there doing that stuff. And and I'm 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 really really trying so hard to enjoy this this situation. I am. But I can't feel anything. I'm still looking through this tunnel. I'm still afraid she's going to take this switchblade out and she's going to take a souvenir home. That's that's what I'm thinking in my mind. I black out again. I black out again. And then the next thing I see, okay, she's she's come up north now. And and at this point, she's a little cowboy action. Okay, we're going to say some cowboy action. And and she keeps saying, "Oh, come on. You can do this. You can do this. Come on. Come on. You can" And I can't. I can't do it because I'm so afraid. I am so afraid she's going to cut it off. I'm so afraid she's going to cut it off and she's going to rob me. I black out again. Next thing I know, I wake up and I'm like, it's like, I felt like this, but I wasn't, I, I wasn't literally tied down to the bed. I wasn't literally tied to the bed, but I felt like I was. I'm thinking, okay, she's already tied me to the bed. She's already cut it off. And now she's robbing me because I hear her. She's like in my kitchen. I guess she gave up. I, I guess she, because I was a lost cause. So I, I hear her in my kitchen and I, I just, I yell out, is everything okay? And then she said something, and it was like, everything's fine, 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 fine. And that's, that's all I heard. And then the next thing I know, it's, it's probably 3 or 4 in the morning. And she's getting dressed, and I'm still lying there in the bed. She's getting dressed, and, and I say goodbye. I said, you know, normally I would have walked you out, but I, and then I blacked out again. So she leaves, and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, okay. I've got to get up enough energy now. I've got to move my hands from my sides. And I have to I have to feel between my legs to make sure it's still there. Because I was worried. I was so worried and concerned that it was gone. So I I I muster up enough energy to lift my hands from the bed. And then I, I take them and then I put them between my legs. Oh, the sigh of relief that came over my body. I was, I, I felt so much better after I felt my little guy was still there. And, and I'm, I, I'm guessing now what she was actually getting from her purse was actually a condom. So she, she had actually put that on me. Uh, you know, and she wasn't going to cut it off. She wasn't, going, she wasn't going to do any of that stuff. But I was so afraid. I was so paranoid. I thought she was. I thought I was a dead man. So I think pretty early on, I learned my lesson. <laughs> I learned my lesson that, you know, one night stands, they're, they're not really what they're cut out to be. You know, they're, they're not really as good as you might think they are. And I also learned that I can't handle marijuana. I, I just, I can't. Uh, I was, I was, I was scared to death. I really was. Now, Holly says, um, Ah, thank God I still have my penis. And that's what I was thinking in my mind. That's what I was thinking the whole time in my mind. I couldn't wait to just feel between there to make sure my little bishop was still there. My little guy was still there. 
And see, that was supposed to be a fun night. That was supposed to be one of my great one-night stands. Uh, but it wasn't. I mean, it ended up just being terrifying. I was absolutely, positively mortified with that whole experience. Never wanted to do that again, ever, ever. I, did, I never wanted to put myself in that situation again where I was afraid I was going to get my penis cut off. Never, never. See, that, that's why you shouldn't have sex with strangers. See, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people uh, say that it's fun, you know, the whole casual sex scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have sex all the time with strangers. Yeah, they, they come over, we do it, they go home. I mean, it's cool. One night stands are cool. No, they're terrifying. Don't, don't ever do it. Don't ever try that. It's just not worth it. And, and I can honestly say, I have never, ever been that afraid in my whole entire life. Mortified. Totally, 110% mortified over the whole experience. And maybe it's just because I'm not, you know, some cool guy. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's because I'm a dork. I don't know. But I, I couldn't handle it. Uh, Johnny says, um, he says, I boinked this one chick once. I thought I was banging a bulldog. Uh, she was angry in bed. Yeah, see, I don't know. I, I, was, I was afraid. So I, I haven't touched that again, and I, I probably won't ever again. I, it was just, it was just, it was, it was a bad experience for me. So anyway, that, now I've told my story. And see, see, it's embarrassing because I couldn't perform. You know, if I was cool, I could have got on here and I could have been like, yeah. Oh, it was good. Yeah, I, I, I got it up. She jumped up there. Yeah, and, and you know, it was the time of her life. She had the she had the best. There were fireworks, you know. She ended up getting out uh, the strawberries and the whipped cream, and she got out like this T-bone steak. She threw it at me. Yeah, it was gr oh yeah. I performed. We went three hours, three hours of non-stop, pure one hundred percent ecstasy. That's. That's exactly what it was. No, I don't. No, I can't. See, I don't have that story to tell. I don't. Basically, it comes down to this. I was stoned. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't get it up. I thought she was going to cut it off. And then she left. That's basically my whole one night stand story. And I haven't tried it since. The one night stands. I mean, see, see, I think even with me, even with most men, I think it's always better if you, if you at least kind of sort of know the person just a little bit, because you've got to have that trust thing there, you know, especially you don't, you don't just smoke pot with strangers and then go to bed with them. You don't do that because this, or it, I don't, because then I get all paranoid and stuff. I, I get super paranoid obviously. And then I just, I can't, because I've seen too many movies. I ha I've seen way too many movies. I know what happens in these movies. And see, and that's probably why I was thinking the worst. You know, if I just jumped in there and had a great time, maybe it would have been fine. I don't know. But you don't understand. I was so out of my mind. I was so stoned. And I don't see... I really, I just don't understand how these, how people smoke it every day because I, I don't feel in control of myself. I don't feel like I can function. I, I know I couldn't, if I did it every day, I couldn't function. I could barely make it back to the bedroom. <clears throat> I could barely, I could barely unbuckle my belt and take my pants off. I don't remember getting in the bed. I don't remember hardly anything. It's like little snapshots. It's like, okay, she's beside me. She says, what can I do to make you stay awake? And the next thing I know, she's down there. The next thing I know, she's on top of me. I see her going through her purse. And then in my mind, I'm visualizing her taking a machete from her purse, 
or maybe a chainsaw. I picture her in my mind taking a chainsaw from her purse, putting on a hockey mask, and then cutting me in half. That's what I'm picturing in my mind. Now, you tell me. <coughs> you tell me if you're a guy and you're picturing Jason coming after you with a chainsaw or you picture some samurai guy with this big sword getting ready to cut your penis off, you tell me if you can perform. I don't think you can. I, I don't think you could do it. And see, that's what was going on in my mind the whole time. The whole time. And see, it would have been an easy score. It would have. I got her back to my place. You know, had I not smoked the joint, had I, had I not partook in the doobie, then I, I may have been able, I, I may have done okay. I mean, still, I was 20. I mean, I, I could at least tell you the story now, and, and I could exaggerate in a good way, like I said earlier. So, so see, I don't, I was afraid. I mean, does anybody else have an embarrassing story? Am I the only person in the whole world with a whole th with a with a story like that? I mean, PS Infinity says, I guess if you like the whole Jason thing, you could. Well, yeah, I guess if you're into that stuff, I guess it wouldn't be a problem. But I mean, I was I was honestly 100% just freaking mortified. Mortified. Never seen her again. Never ever 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 once saw her again after that. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her. I, I don't blame her for not calling me. It's like, I'm not calling that guy. I'm not calling that guy back. Now he couldn't, he couldn't get it up. Why would I call him back? I just, all I was doing, I went to smoke a joint with him, have sex. That's all. He couldn't even do that. He couldn't do any of that. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. One of the, one of the worst nights of my life. It really was. And Johnny says, dude, my last show's embarrassing. He says, I had, a, I had a penis infection. He says, that sucked. And he did. You need to listen to his last show because, well, I'm not going to get into great detail because it, it makes me throw up in my mouth. But you need to go back and listen to Johnny's show because if you want an embarrassing story, <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm, I'm, I just broke out into a cold sweat because I try not to think about this story. Uh, did you watch the old movies where the where the Jason came into their houses and he he like killed all these people while they were having sex? Have you seen those movies? And then Johnny says, I talked about how my penis got a zit on it, got infected, and my junk swelled up like a, you know. And he says it can happen to any guy. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's worse. I don't. I don't know if a zit on your penis is worse or if if the. The thought in your mind of getting it cut off is worse. I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. Never never saw the girl again. Never talked to her again. And, and like I said, I, I don't blame her one bit. I really don't. Because I'm sure, while it was a really bad night for me, I mean, I, I know she had the best of intentions. I know this. So she, I don't blame her for not calling me back, I guess. She could have called me one time. She could have left me a flower. She didn't just have to leave like, like that. I know I sound like a chick now. I know. But anyway, that's my story. And I was hesitant to tell it. I really was. But now I feel better. It's, see, you guys are actually better than a, than a psychiatrist. You really are. And, and if, if I ever decide to, to tell the story again, it, it, it'll probably get better, I think. Uh, the, the more times I tell it... Uh, <laughs> It'll probably get better. Yeah, and I'm more than likely going to delete this show. So, so if, if you want to hear it again, go ahead and download it uh, because I'm probably going to get rid of it. I just wanted to share this with a select few. That's, that's all. I, just, I, I wanted to get it off my chest. Uh, so if you do a show here on Spreaker, go ahead and type the word show into the chat. Make sure you spread that Spreaker love. Make sure you follow each other. Listen to it at least one time. You don't have to keep listening to it. You can just you can delete them if you don't like it after that. It's fine. Whatever you want, just give them a chance. That's all I'm asking you to do. I do not, nor will I ever take any of you for granted, because there are a million other things you could be doing, but you choose to listen to me. 
And I appreciate that. I really, really do. Until I broadcast again, please remember, life is good. And I'm gone. You have been exposed to the Chris Top program. Tune in next, um... Uh, tune in next, uh... Yeah, I don't have a schedule. Right.